Today is full primary, so join me at the top of your mat in Samastitihi. Bring your feet together, let your heels be slightly apart. Close your eyes and begin to activate that sounding breath. Imagine that we are going underwater into a sacred underworld. Open your eyes, Surya Namaskara A. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Step, walk, float back, Chaturanga Dandasan. Roll over the toes, buoyant chest. Slide back, upside down V, downward dog. So for the first down dog, you might like to pedal the knees. You might like to lift the legs or crack your toes. But immediately choosing a spot for your eyes to land. Completing your exhale, eyes forward, top of the mat. Lengthen, fold over the thighs. Stand up, palms touch, release. Inhale up, exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Step walk, fly back, low push up. Over the toes, buoyant heart. Slide back, downward dog. So the objective, the intention is to be alive in your life. So we use the yoga poses and the repetition of the yoga poses to be more alert and alive. Hollow your belly, eyes forward, top of the mat. Lengthen. Bow. Stand up, palms touch. Release the arms. Last one, up. Fold in. Lengthen. Step walk, pounce back, Chaturanga Dandasan. Over the toes, shoulders back. Downward dog, flip the toes, extend your legs, and land. Something synonymous with the practice of yoga is this idea of undoing, of letting go, of being empty. So every inhale, look for space, every exhale, depth. Completing your exhale, eyes forward, top of the mat. Lengthen, bow, stand up, palms touch, release the arms. Surya B, bending into the knees, arms up. Fold over the thighs, inhale, lengthen. Step walk, float back, chaturanga. Urdva Mukha, Adho Mukha. The right foot steps, warrior one, reach up. Hands plant, step back, lower. Ride the inhale, ride the exhale. The left foot steps, warrior one, big up. Down, palms plant, back to lower. Over the toes, slide back, upside down V. So the heart might be beating a little quicker. The body is likely a little warmer. And everything is different now. Completing your exhale, eyes forward, top of the mat. Lengthen, 
Bow. Sit low, palms touch. Stand up. Beautiful, Utkatasan. Over the thighs, forehead to shins. Lengthen. Step walk, fly back, lower. Roll over the toes, eyes up. Slide back. The right foot steps, the back heel drops up. Down, hands plant, back to lower. Up and over. Glide back. The left foot steps, low knee, high heart up. Down, palms plant, back to lower. Urdhva Mukha. Adho Mukha, downward dog. Mula Bandha, the pelvic floor. So the action is like knitting the sitting bones together. Your inhale is an exploration. Your exhale, a deepening, a letting go. Hollow your belly, eyes forward, top of the mat. Big inhale. Exhale, fold. Sit low, palms touch. Stand up. Last one, Utkatasan. Uttanasan, forehead to shins. Arda, lengthen. Step walk, fly back, lower. Roll over the toes, slide back. The right foot steps, warrior one, clean up. Down, palms plant, back to lower. Up we go, slide it back. The left foot steps, low hips, high heart up. Down, hands down, back to lower. Over the toes, downward facing dog, home base. The heart will hammock, the fingers will grip, and a soft look expression slides over the face. Hollow your belly, eyes forward, top of the mat. Big inhale, fold forward, sit low, palms touch, stand up, couch your waist, feet hip distance, Padangustasana, chest up, fold and catch your big toes with your peace fingers. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, dive forward, let your head fall. So the heel action right now is likely the most important, like you're putting out cigarettes, spin the outer heel wide, and then let the torso fall out of the pelvis. Tell me about your arms and how much effort you have through the fingers and the shoulders. Inhale, lengthen. Bend your knees and slide your hands under your feet. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bow. The head hangs heavy. The eyes track the wall. Knit the low ribs to the hips and let yourself fall out of the pelvis. Go toward sensation. Inhale, lengthen. Catch your waist, stand up, samastitihi. Take a step up with the right foot, trikonasana, triangle facing the back. Right hand to the shin, to the floor, to the toe, the left arm is up. And although there are a million places to look, look at your thumbnail. Press into the right big toe to awaken the inline of the leg.
thighs down and inhale lifts you right toes in left toes forward hinge trikonasan triangle so this posture is in the asana hall of fame the yoga pose hall of fame because we could never perfect it we can do it over and over and over and never perfect it that's why we call it practice Eyes down and inhale lifts you. Catch your waist and face your right leg. Twisted triangle, sitting bones back. Take the left hand to the pinky toe edge. Right hand swivels off the back toward the ceiling. Give me more attention through the legs. Eyes down, come all the way up, face the opposite leg, catch the waist, thighs wide, plant the right palm, swivel open. The low belly is back. There is a soft expression on your face. Eyes down, a big inhale lifts us, five-pointed star, top of the mat. Take a bigger step out with the right foot, lunge to face the right, right elbow to the knee or palm outside the foot, Utita Parsvo Konasana. If you are familiar with gate pose done on your knee, that's the extension I'm asking for through your arm. Mula Bandha, knit the sitting bones together, eyes down, come up, other side. Pelvic floor, pelvic floor, find the shape, land. Set the eyes. Work your knee to your armpit, your left knee to your left armpit. A big inhale sweeps you up to face the right leg. Drop the back knee. Left arm up, hook it over, hands to prayer or the arms open. You could spin the back heel to the floor. Parvrita Parsvokanasana. Inhale space, exhale rotation. What's happening in the back? foot. Eyes down and inhale sweeps you up to face forward. Drop the back knee, right arm up, hook it over, hands to prayer, maybe they open. Feel the pinky toe edge of the back foot, anchor, stomp, stamp the ground. A big inhale lifts you up, five-pointed star, top of the mat. Take a step out with the right Prasarita series, catch the waist, lengthen, fold forward, plant your hands. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold, walk your hands back and lower your head to the floor. Mula Bandha again, and let's go a bit higher into the flying lock of the abdomen. Squeeze the elbows toward each other. Inhale, lengthen. Catch your waist. Stand up. The arms float open, catch the waist, squeeze the tips of the elbows together, beautiful Airdrie, eyes up, fold forward, beautiful rows. Head to the ground, elbows together, less weight on the heels. 
stay alive and awake even if you've done this pose a million times. A big inhale stands you up. The arms float open for C. You might like a bit wider stance. Intertwine the fingers behind the back. Lift the chin. Fold forward. Reach the hands overhead. The back side of the ponytail would be on the ground one day. So it's not hairline, it's not crown of the head, it's back of the head. A big inhale stands us up. The arms float open. Catch your waist for D. Inhale, lift the heart. Hands track the legs as we fold forward. Catch the big toes. Lengthen and fold. So pay close attention to this mudra. So a mudra is a lock. It's a, uh, a stamp of approval. So we're pulling up with our hands, but we're anchoring down with our toes. Inhale, lengthen. Catch your waist. Stand up. Top of the mat. Take a prayer behind the back, right side up or upside down. Step out with the right foot, parsvo tanasana, face the right leg. Lift your heart. Fold. So the gazing point is to the right big toe joint. Every inhale, we're lengthening the spine and every exhale, folding. We're looking for space between thought, space between muscle, space between bone. A big inhale stands you up pivots you to face the opposite way. Lengthen and fold. Squeeze the palms together, your eyes on that left big toe. A big inhale picks you up, opens you wide, top of the mat. Standing big toe pose, feet hip distance. Catch your waist and live in the left leg. Lift the right arm up to invite the right leg to the party and catch the knee or the toe. You could bow or stay upright. If you're bowed forward, stand tall, take your leg to the side, eyes over the opposite shoulder. So this is you, this is your attention, this is your body, this is your moment. Eyes through center, leg through center, point your toe. So the intensity of the primary series is intended to remove what is not you and release the foot. Opposite side, lift the left leg, invite the left leg up. Some of you might like to fold. Make a statement with the mudra, which is the hand and the foot connecting. If you're bowed forward, stand tall, take your leg to the side, eyes over the shoulder, beautiful legs. Yes, cat. Nice rage, kick out through the big toe, a little more rage. Yes, more, 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 oh, stunning. Eyes through center, leg through center, maybe you bow. Catch your waist, point your toe, shoulders draw back. Feel the heat. Lift it even higher. So it's a game of alchemy, really. And release the foot. 
half bound standing lotus or tree, take the right leg up, either stomp the thigh or cross the foot over the thigh to catch the foot and fold. The fingers eventually are directly lined up beside the foot. The head is heavy, the chin reaching to the shin. Inhale, lengthen if you're bowed, exhale. Rise all the way up, release the shape. Other side, half bound standing lotus or tree. Cross it over, sweep your hand behind your back, maybe bow. Press the left big toe as, you, as deep as you can into your hand. Press your right big toe as deep as you can into the floor. This is your stamp of approval on your own asana. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale. Rise all the way up. Release the shape. Mountain pose. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Step walk, float back, chaturanga. Urdhva mukha, adho mukha. Step walk, float to the top and sit on your throne, utkatasan. Nice and low in the hips, the chest is like a helium balloon floating up. The last of the standing poses. Beautiful fold forward. This is either a handstand hop, vinyasa, or a step back to lower. Ride your inhale. Ride your exhale. Step the right foot forward, warrior one. So this is the very last. We've got four more standing poses. Rhetorical question, but tell me about your face. Straighten the right leg, pivot to face the left, lunge, land. Open wide, warrior two, face the back of the mat. Walk that left foot farther forward. Imagine two people were pulling your wrists in opposite directions. Straighten the left leg, pivot to face the right, warrior two. Low pelvis, open shoulders, eyes set. If you keep your yoga up, you will be kept up. Windmill your hands to the earth. It's either a handstand vinyasa or a step back to lower. Spinal extension. Downward dog. So if you like blocks for your jump throughs, jump backs, get a hold of them. Eyes forward through to a seat. Dandasana. Plant the palms, flex the feet, touch the big toe joints together, and bow. So if you choose to opt out of one of the 54 vinyasas, this would be an option. Paschimottanasana. Fold forward, catch your big toes. Lengthen and fold over your legs. Inhale for length and space and exhale depth. Mula Bandha, pelvic floor, that's another seal, stamp of approval. Inhale, lengthen, go for your deepest variation. Maybe just the way you are or catch a wrist.
Inhale, lengthen, release the shape. It's a vinyasa or a dandasana. So you could cross the ankles, shoot the legs back, take an up dog and a down dog and through to a seat. Purvotanasana, bent knees or straight legs, fingers face your heels, come up. Let the head fall back. Your eyes could attempt to look at your baseboards, a dust bunny, a plug-in. And release your bottom. It's a vinyasa or a dandasana, beautiful Nika. So find your flow, make it work. And that's the beauty, right? It's, it's really personal. Take your right leg, cross it over. It's a half bound seated lotus. For some of us, it might be a figure four. If you could cross the foot over the thigh, catch the big toe and begin your descent. Inhale, lengthen. Release the shape. It's a vinyasa or a dandasana. So when you're building stamina, you might want a vinyasa between, uh, like after both sides. Take your left leg, cross it over half lotus or figure four. Catch the foot and fold. My favorite thing about the primary series is that this is not natural in lots of bodies, but we're doing it to create the impossible, to make the impossible possible. Inhale, lengthen. Release the shape, vinyasa, dandasana, or an L-sit. All the way through, you might jump into tear bang. Take your right leg, tuck it back, move the meat of the calf. Take your tailbone back behind you. So there's a definite action of sticking your bum behind you and dive over your left leg. Inhale up out of the pelvis, exhale over the shin. Inhale up out of the pelvis, exhale over the shin. Inhale, lengthen. Release the pose. You can jump straight out of this or go to Dandasana or take your Vinyasa. It's your practice all the way through to a seat. Tirang Mukha, other side. Left leg tucks back. Take your hips, roll them behind you so you're already getting the forward bend in the pelvis and dive over the right leg. Inhale up, out of the hips, and exhale over. Inhale, lengthen. Release the pose. It's a vinyasa or a dandasana. Moving to our janu, through to a seat, Janu A. Take your right leg, stomp your thigh. Pivot your diaphragm to square over the knee and fold over the left. So the primary series is so much about tradition. It's where every vinyasa style comes from. And I love it because it's not for the faint of heart. It's not easy for anyone. Inhale, lengthen. Release the shape, vinyasa or dandasana. All the way back through to a seat. Janu A. Take the left foot, stomp your thigh, maneuver your diaphragm and dive over your beautiful leg. 
and maybe take a look at your feet, your toes, and every inhale sweeps like wind through the body and every exhale drops like weight. Inhale, lengthen. Release your shape. It's a vinyasa or a dandasana. So for the janus, you can always repeat what you just did. And now they each deepen. So the right leg folds in and either do what you did or pick up your bottom and sit on your heel. And then, they, and then you fold forward. There's an old joke. This is preparation for C. It's also preparation H, because it's good for hemorrhoids, apparently. Inhale, lengthen, release the pose, vinyasa, dandasana, or a little L-sit. Little scan of the face. How's my breath? How's my body? How's my attention? Left leg in. Pick up your bottom. Sit on your foot or repeat A and dive over that right leg. Inhale, space, length, freedom. Exhale, drop. Inhale, space, length, traction. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Release the shape, vinyasa or dandasana. So when it comes to C, there's a couple options. Some of you might drop to your knees and take a toe squat. Otherwise, take your right leg, catch the meat of the calf, roll over to the left hip, and stomp your left thigh with your right foot and fold over the left leg. Work your knee to the ground, work your heel to the groin. Big inhale lifts the heart, releases the shape Vinyasa, Dandasana, if you're toe squatting, untoe squat, and maybe tap the tops of the feet. Yeah, Jules. Other side, take the foot, fold it in. Foot to the inner groin, knee to the earth, stomp your thigh. And what we're doing is we're learning how to use different muscles in our bodies. When in normal life would someone ever put the sole of their foot in their inner groin? Never. Inhale, lengthen. Release the shape, vinyasa or dandasana. Nice work. We're moving to our marichis. So there's four of these. Beautiful, Rosie. Take your right leg, fold it in nice, Lori, and take the foot super wide from the thigh. Reach the right arm forward, tangle it around your shin. Big inhale, lifts the chest like an up dog, and exhale folds you over. Own the left foot. So this is part of your land, this is your territory, that left foot, and it often gets forgotten, you know, like dusting or under your bed. Inhale, lengthen, release the shape. It's a vinyasa or a dandasana. All the way back through other side, take the left leg, fold it in, left arm forward, tangle your hands behind your back, an inhale like an up dog, and exhale over your shin. So this is a rhetorical question, but if you were to look at your spine, tailbone to let's say cervical spine, the neck, 
Is it a straight line or is there a curve in it? And if you wanted to make a straight line, what little actions would you take? Inhale, lengthen, release the shape, vinyasa or dandasana. Beautiful, Jules. Nice, Rach. Beautiful, Lori. Through to a seat, and now we add a half lotus to this puppy. Take your left leg into a half lotus or tuck it under. Fold the right knee in. Reach the right arm forward and tangle your hands around that folded knee joint. Pretend you totally forgot about your lotus leg. Inhale, up dog, and exhale, fold. So can you find the same feeling as the other pose, even though you've got this big meat stick of a leg in the way? And what's different now? Like, how could you make yourself a smaller package? Inhale, lengthen. Release the shape. It's a vinyasa, a dandasana, or an elset. Beautiful work. This is a good point in the practice. And then half bound lotus with the right, or tuck the foot underneath the folded left knee. Fold the left knee up. Reach your left arm forward, tangle your hands behind your back. Try to get the same depth of a grip. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, fold. So the one thing that's so cool about yogis, particularly Ashtanga yogis, is your hands get really strong because you start holding these binds and at first your little fingers can't handle it and then they get stronger. Inhale, lengthen, release the shape, vinyasa, or dandasana. So good, so good. All the way back through to a seat, Marichi C, a seated twist. Take your right leg, fold it in. There's a pigeon toe action. Now lean back, get the tissue of the breast, get the tissue of the tummy way out of the way, hook your left elbow on your knee joint and maybe tangle the hands for a bind behind the back or use your right hand to support you. Tell me about your face. Your lips in particular. So they should be sweet and gentle and put together. The eyes come forward, untangle this shape, vinyasa or dandasana. All the way through, other side, Janu C, left leg in, sorry, Mary Chi C, left leg in, reach that right arm up, hook it, and maybe tangle it. So many of these poses require little tiny tricks and oftentimes it's moving the meat of the body out of the way and then leveraging in ways that are pretty unusual. The eyes come forward, untangle, vinyasa or dandasana. After Mary Chi D, we get a little bit of a break from the vinyasas. But again, it's your practice, so do your thing. Beautiful, Airdrie. Take your left leg into a half lotus or tuck it under. Fold your right knee to the sky. So we're binding around that right knee joint. Some of us will reach the right hand behind the back and hold the left knee. Some of us will be able to tangle the arms and take this into a bind. The point of the lotus foot is to put pressure in your abdomen. You know, there's no mistaking if your ankles feel it or your tummy or wherever, it's purposeful. 
the eyes come forward, untangle, vinyasa or dandasan. All the way through to a seat. Other side. Take the right leg, half lotus or under. Fold the left knee to the sky, and if you're not binding, set yourself up in a way where that foot definitely puts pressure on your abdomen, your digestive tract. We want to learn to be okay with sensation, to also understand what is the edge of injury and what's the edge of newness. The eyes come forward, release, vinyasa, dandasana, or else it. So in the Yoga Sutras, there are obstacles on the path of a yogi, but a person, the obstacles of being human, navasana boat pose, and the first obstacle is self-doubt. Not that common. You might hold the knees, you might extend the arms, the eyes are at the toes. So the opposite of self-doubt is confidence, and confidence is when you do what you say you're going to do, not for anyone but you. Cross the ankles, press the hands into the blocks, pick it up. Navasana number two, the second obstacle is laziness. Fatigue, I don't feel like it. Nah, maybe tomorrow. Squeeze the feet together, lift the legs. The opposite is showing up anyway. Cross the ankles, pick up the bottom. Last one we'll do is for the obstacle of distraction. The opposite would be flow, connection, interest, enthrallment. And we'll meet in a downward dog. So step, walk, float back, you might vinyasa. And this is Bhuja Pindasana shoulder pressure posture. If you know it, go straight into it. Some of you will walk your feet behind your wrists and take a squat. Some of you will walk your feet in front of your hands and work the feet together, widening the elbows, sitting on the arms and crossing the feet. One day you start to pull yourself through, lowering your head down and lifting your feet up. Protracting the shoulders, navels back. Shoulder pressure posture, so fight it. Work your shoulders wide. Untangle, so this is a titi basan to crow pose vinyasa. Some of you might just go to crow and float back to lower. Spinal extension, eyes up. Downward dog. Step walk, float your feet around your wrists and you'll come to your bottom. So for some of us, we'll just work upavishta. For some of us, we'll bend our knees and front crawl our hands by our hips. Start to walk the feet back on the mat, then flip the palms so the palms are down and glide your feet against the floor. Kurmasana, tortoise. Tell me about your spine and if there could be more of a straight line. Some of you might work a bind, maybe the feet, maybe the hands behind the back. Some of you will stay just the way you are. Releasing the shape, so the option out of it, you could just extend the legs, but you could pick it up, titi, to vinyasa back. And we'll come all the way through for a posture that's named after an embryo. 
half lotus, cross-legged, or full padmasan. And then sit back on your bottom. Eventually the arms slip through the knee joints and you catch your face. It's really cute. Or take your hands around your knees to balance. So the pelvic floor and the lift in the pelvic floor is how you control um, this little tiny package. And we're down the left, up the right in a full circle, but think shoulder stand. Some of you might just rock back and forth. So down the left, up the right. Once you make it forward, what a pose. Pick it up, Kukutasan five. Four, three, two, one. Release, vinyasa or dandasana. All the way back through to your seat. Baddha Konasana butterfly. Bottoms of the feet come together, the knees spill. Inhale, height. I again like to scooch or kind of um, rock my hips back so my pubic bone is facing the ground and fold. You can use your abductors to take the knees to the floor. Go to your face, your eyebrows, your fingertips. Either stay as you are or walk the feet forward a little. Open the feet and put your head on your feet. Inhale, rise. Release the shape, vinyasa or dandasana. So we just did an external rotation in the hip and now we're gonna do an internal rotation. The legs go wide. You might actually take your thighs and roll them back and then spider crawl the fingers, maybe catch the edges of the feet as you dive forward, upavishta konasana. Create space because the body might be a little fatigued right now, but it's also warm. So in its warmth, could you find a new norm? Who's norm? Rising all the way up, lift your arms up, lift your legs up. Balance, five, four, get familiar with this because we will rock into this shape for one breath, two, one. This is a vinyasa, so I like to lift it up into titi, but you could just step back and we'll meet on our backs. So supta is reclined reclined angle posture on your back, toes overhead and wide. Catch your big toes, remember this mudra? Catch your big toes and with that, flex your toes against your grip. And that's how you'll catch yourself for one breath balancing on your bum. Heels back, rock up, balance on the bum. Maybe spin so you don't hit a wall and hyperextend and fall. Nice, Ren. Nice, Lori. Release vinyasa or lie on your back. Supta Padangustasan. I think Tabby Joyce did this as a little breather gift. Lift the right leg up and catch your toe. The left hand reaches toward the left knee as we coil, curl our chest up toward the long leg. Yeah, 
Release the neck and shoulder. Take the right leg out wide. Eyes over the left shoulder. Take your eyes through center, your leg through center, bow. Release the neck and shoulder, release the leg, opposite leg, sweep it up, catch the toe. The right hand reaches for the right knee as the neck and shoulders bow and hinge. Release the neck and shoulder, take that left leg wide. Flex the foot, so feel the mudra. Again, it's your personal stamp of approval. The asana, the practice, it's all about you. Eyes through center, leg through center. We're gonna go straight into our plow shape. And so this is one more rock and roll. Toes overhead. Catch your big toe joints. If you want to do the full vinyasa, you could do that. Catch your big toes. Kick your heels back. Rock up to balance on your bottom. Pull your chest away from your legs. Point your big toes. I often imagine that fairy tale Rapunzel and the big long ponytail hanging down out of the castle. Imagine your hair, even if it's short, is like hanging down so the neck is dropped back. Rise up, vinyasa dandasana, or lie on your back for one more rock and roll. So this one requires a bit more oomph. What is oomph? I don't know, Google it after. Reach your toes overhead. Catch around the feet like a panini sandwich. Kick your heels back, rock up. If you're up, catch behind the legs, fold in. Mula Bandha, so this is an interesting position of the pelvis, it's rounded, right? And so the tendency would be to fall forward, but we're gonna use our arms to pull our legs back. Inhale, lengthen. Release the shape, vinyasa dandasana, or lie on your back for the final pose before we close. So this is known as setu bandasana, mer person pose. And I call it that because your feet are like a mermaid tail. Fan your feet out to the side, think Charlie Chaplin. And then press the feet down as you peel your hips up. Now some of you might roll over right onto the, the crown of the head to the hairline. The hands eventually cross over the chest like a vampire sleeping in its coffin. And release the shape. Vinyasa, chakrasana, or stay on your back as we set up for back bends. So we'll follow the train of the obstacles, and I love this because when we hit one, we know it's normal. We're not abnormal. So the fourth obstacle is loss of enthusiasm. We kind of forget why we were so excited about it in the first place. Lift your pelvis up, little bridge, full wheel. The opposite of loss of enthusiasm is vidya, which means enthusiasm, excitement, energy. And come all the way down. The next obstacle is loss of memory, so forgetfulness, forgetting the, the yoga poses, the sequencing, the breath count, second back bend, and the opposite is memory, which is shriti, a very gross word. Yeah, 
Squeeze the knees together. Push your chest toward the back of your mat. And come all the way down. The last back bend is for the obstacle of once we start performing at a certain level. Uh, the, the requirement to perform at that level can feel overwhelming. And we're just like, I just can't do it anymore. Push the floor away, go up. Little bridge, full meal, wheel, full meal. It could be related to your yoga practice. It could be your professional life, your love life. But you've taken on more. But the beauty is that capacity actually grows. Anyone who's ever had a child or a business or done something, your capacity grows. Come all the way down. Tuck your knees to your belly, cross your ankles, rock up. Paschimottanasana, a forward bend. So we let our body fall over our legs. And as you do this, I hope there is a subtle smile that blends over the face for everything you've just done. So the practice, so much of it is about emptying out. And the, the work of, of primary or vinyasa is that we work really hard. And in doing so, we burn away um, agitation, annoyance, distraction. Rise all the way up to vinyasa or lie on your back for shoulder stand. Julie, I like what you're up to. So on your back, if you are on your cycle or your neck is tender, you may want a block under your bottom to put your legs up. Otherwise, it's shoulder stand. My one girlfriend says it's so embarrassing when teachers say that. Then you have to be like, I'm on my period. But, the, but it could be your neck also. Otherwise, toes are overhead. Catch your upper back. Send your legs to the sky. Feel a subtle internal rotation of the legs. Take a look at all 10 of your toes. From shoulder stand moving to plow, let those toes fall overhead. Intertwining the fingers behind the back so you get a bit more height, a bit more space for the neck. And then bending your knees, blocking out the sounds of the room. Feel the pressure of your legs on your head. Rising all the way up so it's either, either a diamond shape with the legs or a lotus position with the legs. And whatever position, you could reach the arms up to touch the knees. Tuck the knees in toward the belly. Maybe wrap yourself into a, a small ball. Hands could be around the knees. And then releasing onto the back for Matsyas in fish pose. So if you have lotus, you'll catch your lotus toes, reach your knees to the earth, chest up, chin up. Do you see what you're looking at? Like what are you actually looking at? What color is it? What shape is it? 
Untangle the arms, the legs, palms touch. Lift those legs nice and high. Activate that curve in the lower back. And then untangle, come down. Chakrasana, rock up to a seat. Vinyasa and set yourself up for headstand. So the elbows are nice and tight. Snuggle in if you prefer a handstand, you could do that. So nice and steady. If you do this pose quite fluidly, I would say let's work to make it extra beautiful, beautiful, Airdrie. Airdrie, I think you can lift both legs at the same time. Can you do that one more time? Walk it in, both legs at the same time. Better. Yeah, exactly, good. Nice, Lori. Beautiful D. Yeah, Rach. And if you're upside down, get lighter through the legs by demanding more of them. Demand more of the elbows so the legs get light. And then if you're in headstand, take a pike, slide your bottom to the back of the room, feet forward. Nice rose. And all the way up. And all the way down, sit back, child's pose. Hmm. So we're going backward through time, I'm certain of it. Our body gets younger, softer, more malleable. And hopefully our mind opens up. And we go backward through time before we had such strong opinions about everything. When we were in the flow, when we knew what we loved, what we wanted. Take a vinyasa and meet me in a seat for our last three poses. It's cross-legged. It's a half lotus or it's a full Padmasan, a full lotus pose. Lotus people uh, really push the knees together to make your lotus small. And then the hands come behind the back, catch opposite elbows or big toes, and then fold forward. Rising all the way up, extend the arms, the thumb, the first finger touch. Back of the neck is long. A scan, a watchful eye, a loving watchful eye over the person you are becoming. On this path, not even a little bit of work is wasted. It's extra change in your bank account. Open your eyes, press your palms down into the floor, lift it up. Burn the last little bit of uh, gas so that when it's time to die, you're ready to go higher. Eyes up, bottom up, mula bandha up. 
and release. Take a vinyasa and spin around to lie on your back for Shavasana, corpse pose. And for all my little corpses, be so comfortable. Put a, a blanket on if you need, cover your eyes if you need. Let your palms flip open. Take an inhale. <sighs> Let it go. This practice is about building momentum. Momentum toward right action. Momentum toward the path you want to walk. So let anything die. If you've been harboring any negativity or sadness, let it go as though it were that easy. Take a deep inhale. Ah. One more. Bring movement to your fingers, bring movement to your toes. Stretch your arms long overhead, a big full body stretch. Tuck your knees towards your belly to roll to the right. and rise to a seat. Before you bring your hands together in front of your heart, do a quick scan of the body from crown to toes. That's your body and it's an extension of your brain, your life force, your mission. Not out of habit, but out of great respect for who you are and who you are becoming, hands to your heart. Bow your chin and lift your heart toward your hands. Lifting our eyes and our hearts to each other, thank you for your practice.